Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now today we're going to take a look at fixing up a vintage Mego chips, Ponch and John. In front of me you can see I have Ponch and John both in a little bit of a sort of sorry state. It looks like the baddies have got the better of them but both of them should be restorable. So let's take a closer look at what needs doing and what we've got to fix to get these two guys back up and running. First up I think the uh, obvious thing is that they've both got broken legs or bits of their legs missing. If we look at John here he has got a foot missing so that's a fairly easy thing to sort out and then poor old Ponch uh, has the sort of standard uh, Mego problem of a broken knee pin so we're just going to uh, replace that. Both of the outfits are in well I'd say reasonable condition they need a little bit of uh, sewing doing to them uh, as you can see these trousers have a few sort of marks on them but nothing too much wrong these ones here have a couple of little holes in I think some of the uh, press studs are missing as well on the back oh no those are up there so again it's just a bit of a clean there's a few holes along the seams and things that we may be able to sort out and again if we look at this top here just a little bit of sort of tidying up and a bit of cleaning. Then of course there are all the accessories that need to be found and I've been hunting those down over the last few months and I have a bag here of bits and other spare figures and this hopefully should be everything we need to fix up these two figures. So let's get started. So here we have Ponch and John both with their sort of various leg issues. We'll start with the John first because that's a pretty easy one to do. As you can see he's missing a foot. Now with John I could just replace the whole leg because I have spares like this one here which has a spare leg on it but I've shown you that before. So on this one what we're going to do is actually just swap the foot out which again is a pretty easy job to do. If you look at the feet they're held on just by a little sort of pin and you can actually put push those out pretty easily. I've got a uh, pair of tweezers here which have a sort of a larger end to them and just by pushing on the pin you can see there that the little plastic pin comes out and uh, that's all you need to do. If we push that out you can then remove the foot like so and we can just swap that one straight back on here just line it up so that the, the hole is lined up and then push this little plastic pin back in place. If you don't have the plastic pin I'm sure there's a bit of Lego that uh, would fit but again if you have a sort of spares bag there tend to always be these little uh, ankle pins lying around. There you go so that's John fixed he now has his foot replaced. Now poor old Ponch has the other sort of common issue with the legs and that is the pin that holds the knee joint together has broken. The pins are made up of two parts you have a little sort of outer post like that and this inner one that sort of clips inside and what happens is the end of these snap off and again if you've got a bag of uh, sort of spare parts you can normally salvage a pin uh, which is what I've done here. Now the only problem I find with uh, Ponch is that he's a slightly different shade of plastic. He's obviously got a sort of a darker tone to him than the sort of more Caucasian colour. You can see there's a slight change in the, the sort of colour of the legs. Uh, but I don't have any other legs with that sort of pin in its spare. So I'm just going to use a normal flesh toned one uh, which you can see doesn't match particularly well. But as he's going to be wearing a uniform you won't see it. And at some point I may find another busted up Ponch that I can swap the legs over. So for the now this will do. So all we've got to do is uh, put the outer pin in like so. On the inside of the leg we'll pop the outer part of the leg on if it will fit and then we'll push the pin in place and we'll sort of pin his leg back on and if uh, yeah, as I say I find another one in the future I will swap this out but for now this should uh, be fine. There you go just pin that back on and that's his leg reattached. With the uniforms I always try to give them a wash when I uh, first get them because they do tend to have a lot of grime and dirt on them and these haven't been washed yet so we will give them a wash in some hot soapy water and you can see here I have a few different sort of versions of them. This outfit came together so you can see that it matches in colour uh, but the top doesn't have any buttons on it. I have other versions here you can see that have tiny little buttons on one side. I think this is possibly a later issue uh, and they just stopped putting the buttons on because I also have an alternate version of the top here again with buttons different kind of fabric though slightly uh, sort of more orangey fabric so I'm going to sort of mix and match these outfits uh, just to sort of pick the best ones once they're all cleaned and have been repaired and as I said earlier you can see on these trousers there's a few little tears in the fabric I'm not really sure what I can do about those because it's not on a seam I could sew them up but you'll end up with little sort of 
pinch there. Maybe I can find something to stick on the inside, but it maybe I just leave those and at some point I'll find a better pair of trousers. But first thing, let's give these a good wash and get them all clean. And then we can start sort of sewing up any repairs that need doing on them. Now with a lot of these Mego figures you suffer with the, the standard problem of her getting the grey faces or grey heads. I've actually been pretty lucky with this one. The John figure is looking really nice and Ponch, although has gone a little bit grey, it's not too bad. So I'm actually going to leave him. If you want to degrey these there are methods online using uh, plastic coat paint and tyre wet uh, but I'm not going to do it on this one. And to be honest I've read reports that that uh, process doesn't last particularly long. So I think really when it's just a mild case of greying you're better off just leaving the figure as is. So all we've got to do on these two is sort out the paint and it's mainly the hair that seems to be damaged. Uh, Ponch is just uh, black hair so we can uh, just mix up a couple of bits of black to sort of touch up all of those. And with John here, now he's going to be a little bit more awkward because the colour of his hair is a very strange sort of shade of yellow with a bit of green in it. So I'm going to have to do quite a bit of mixing to match uh, that sort of colour, but I reckon we can still do it. So uh, let's get the uh, paint on these two sets of hairs sorted out. I'm going to be using Humbrol acrylic paints to uh, paint uh, the hair on all of these uh, figures. Uh, and for Ponch, because his hair, it's fairly glossy but it's not really a gloss finish. I'm going to do my standard trick of mixing two paints together. I have 21 black and 33 black here. 21 is a gloss black and 33 is a matte black and if you mix the two together you'll end up with a finish that matches this sort of shine that uh, we have here on pump. So I've already mixed these up so I'm going to grab a bit of both and just mix them together like so and then carefully go over all of the rubs on uh, Ponch's hair and he'll end up looking as good as new. You see it makes quite a difference just by uh, getting rid of the scratches on there. It looks a, a lot better already. Now John's hair has proved a little bit of a problem because it's a really strange colour. It's a sort of yellowy green colour. So I've actually ended up having to mix four colours together to get a match. I've used some uh, sort of bright yellow, which I think is 99. It could be 66 because they don't put a dot on these bottles. I've got 81, which is a sort of muted sort of dirty yellowy grey. I've got 22 white which is gloss obviously to give it a little bit of a sheen and I've also got a bit of 30 which is a dark green and mixing all of those together I've managed to make a colour. You can see here this is the sort of shade of uh, John's hair. If I just paint this onto some of the scratches on the front You can see that's a very good match, but it's a real sort of pain to uh, mix these colours because it's just got so many sort of little shades to it. So I think when you come to do this yourself, you just have to sort of go by eye and you may have to mix something uh, that sort of uses a lot of different colours to get the result you want. But uh, as you see, you can do it. It just takes a little bit of mixing, but that's actually a pretty good match now. I'm going to uh, get all of these scratches done. I think no one will notice that it's uh, been touched up at all. Now that the clothes have had time to dry we can start tidying them up and there's a lot of loose threads on them so I'm just going to uh, get a small pair of scissors here and cut off 
all of those. It just makes them look a lot tidier if you remove all of these. And uh, it's a fairly simple job to do. Just get a small pair of very sharp scissors and you can easily cut them off. Just go around every sort of area that you see them and uh, remove them. There you go, that's that one done. Now luckily with this there were no uh, press studs missing so I don't need to sew any of those on and none of these actually seem to be loose. Uh, the one pair of trousers I was a bit worried about with these ones that have tiny little tears and I've actually put them on the figure just to test and the boots cover the worst tear which is down here on uh, the leg. So I'm actually just going to leave them. You can see here there's a little bit of damage on the back. It may have been a moth or something has uh, had a go at these because the fabric is fairly sort of... Uh, well, it just feels fairly thin there. So for the moment, I'm not going to do anything with these trousers because that area is hidden. I think once they're on the figure, they should look fine. But hopefully in future, I will find another sort of replacement set of these. So I'm just going to put the best of the outfits on the two figures and then we can start getting all of the accessories together. So they're already starting to look quite good now that the uniforms are back in place and all clean and their hair is all painted. But the uniforms are missing some key features and that is the little badges and stickers that were stuck on them originally. Now these figures did come with a sticker sheet and I've tried to track down a scan of it but I wasn't able to. The best thing I found was actually someone had taken a photograph of the sticker sheet. So using that I've taken it into Photoshop and with a little bit of work and sort of messing around I've managed to recreate the stickers as they would have been originally. I've now printed those out onto some glossy sticky back paper as you can see here. So this is a full set of stickers for one of the figures. You have two badges. These go on either shoulder. You have this little badge in the middle which goes on the helmet uh, which I've got here so you can just stick one on the front of the helmet. And then you have these other two little badges which go on either pocket. So you've got a sort of nameplate and a police badge. So these all need to be cut out and stuck on. So uh, it's a bit of a boring job but let's get doing that. And this file will be available from uh, toyploy.com uh, for you to download for free and print your own because it's obviously something that's going to always be missing on these figures. I now cut out the two sets of uh, these stickers and we can start applying them. I've got a pair of tweezers here just because uh, these are pretty small little stickers. And it's a bit fiddly to deal with. So this is the sort of name badge one which goes on this pocket. 
and then we have the uh, badge that goes on the other side. It's funny that they did these as stickers. I would have thought that they would be much better if they did them as sort of iron-on things. And it may be in future I come back to this and actually make some little iron-on uh, sort of uh, emblems just because I think they'll last a bit longer. These stickers are just going to wear and uh, sort of get uh, crumpled over the years. But that's uh, sort of the way they did these things in the 70s. This one's proving hard to take the sticker off. And we have these two uh, California Highway Patrol badges. One goes on each sleeve. Surprisingly basic, but it does actually make quite a big difference to the outfit. That one goes on that sleeve. I would imagine that a lot of kids that didn't actually bother doing this just left the uniforms uh, blank. And then this final one goes on the helmet, uh, which I have here. It should just go on the front in the middle. Just stick that one on there. And I'll do exactly the same on the, the John figure. Now the final thing these two figures need are all the accessories and I was lucky to get a few bits with them so obviously I have the boots. Uh, these unfortunately aren't uh, available as a reproduction, they seem to be boots that only come with these figures and I don't, haven't found anyone who does a reproduction of them at the moment. But uh, you could use just sort of basic hero boots would work uh, but these are sort of specifically uh, motorcycle cop boots. So we put those on. And hopefully this one will just about cover that tear there on the trousers that I talked about earlier on. As you can see it does, so certainly hides that. Then uh, we need a belt. Now I've only found one original belt and here it is. It's quite a complicated belt, got lots of little bits on it, a place for a gun, a place for the uh, sort of stick, uh, but uh, this again is not reproduced. So I've so far only been able to find one of these, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, I will keep on hunting and I have an idea just to sort of make a placeholder thing to go on the other figure. So let's just put this belt on to Pond. You see that uh, sort of starts to finish the uniform off. And for John, for the moment, what I'm going to use is a cable tie. And I've picked up uh, quite a few of these cable ties for use on various projects. And I thought if I just wrap this around his waist, at least it will look like he's got a belt on or something. And you can use the little sort of, uh, sort of tie part of it just to make it look like a holster. And then at some point I hope to find an original belt. But uh, for now, I think this will just sort of make him look like he's a little bit more finished than he is. So I'm just going to tie that uh, on. That's actually quite convincing really. And I'll get a pair of uh, get some plastic nippers out and just uh, nip off the edge of that. It's not a perfect uh, solution, but at least it makes him look a little bit more displayable. Then we can move on to uh, the sort of missing final accessories. Now you can get reproductions of a lot of these bits. If you go to the Dr. Nego website you can buy a pack of uh, guns and uh, bits and in there you'll find a gun that looks like that and that is the proper gun that uh, they should have. So I'm going to put that into uh, Ponch's holster there. It, that pack also contains a little watch like this, uh, again, which is the correct sort of watch that they should wear. So I'm going to just clip that onto uh, Ponch's hand there. And a pair of sunglasses. Now I do actually have some original sunglasses here. These are the originals. Uh, but in that pack you'll also get a set of sunglasses like that, which again will do the job for the moment. You can just hopefully just fold those. I haven't actually folded these. Sometimes the plastic looks a little bit weak and might break. But uh, there goes a perfectly reasonable set of sunglasses. And then uh, also off the Dr. Mego website you can get the uh, stick, the uh, I don't know what you call this, night stick, something like that, which should fit in the belt holster here. Let's just push that in place. See, starting to look pretty good. So we'll put uh, the helmet on Ponch here. Now these helmets are quite rubbery so you can easily fit them over the head. Oh, it's a bit of a tight fit isn't it? 
get him looking good. And then I'm going to slot those sunglasses in. I'll actually slot the original set of sunglasses in just because I have them. I think this needs a little bit of rearranging. Hopefully I should be able to slot those down the side. And there you go. And I'll put the other accessories on John now as well. And here are the finished two figures. They certainly look good enough to uh, put on display here at Toy Ploy. There's obviously a few bits I would like to find to replace, which is I'd like to get a proper belt for John and some uh, better trousers because those are, ones are a little bit worn. But overall, they do look really nice and I'm pleased with the uh, results I've managed to get from uh, the figures I was sent in. So I want to say a big thank you to uh, Scott Greer, who's very kindly sent in the Ponch figure and a load of other Mego dolls, which I have been restoring, and to John Aspinall, who sent in the bare bones of this John figure on the right. These sorts of donations are always really much appreciated because uh, it's nice to work on figures I wouldn't otherwise have in my collection. And the uh, sticker sheet for the uh, replacement little emblems on the figures, it will be available from toyploy.com. So if you want that, go and download that from there. So I hope this video has been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.